Bishop Crump and to all of you in your respective places, protocol will be fully established. Uh, if we may all please attend unto the bulletin. We all have copies of the program outline. It looks as if we're still distributing them. If everyone would please open to the program so that we can be sure that the proper congregational responses and so forth shall be undertaken. Amen? Amen. Blessed be God who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Most Reverend Willie Rucard, Bible Way Tabernacle, Inman, South Carolina. Following that, we will have the hymn of celebration, Glory to His Name. And we ask that we all sing joyfully and spiritfully uh, unto the Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Father, we come before your presence to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for your spirit that lives within our soul. Oh God, we come to say thank you. You watched over us last night as we slumbered and slept. And Father, we just want to thank you that we can look to the hill from which cometh all of our help. All of our help come from you. Father, we bless your name for this great occasion. Oh, God, we not by might, not by power. Oh, it's by your spirit. We thank you. Oh, God, you said let everything that have breath praise the Lord. We praise you what you have done for this servant, this man of God that's going to be consecrated. Oh, God, we thank you for your power that lives within his soul. And we live within our soul. Father, we thank you that you're good all the time. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you that your grace calls us every day. We thank you unto you that keeps us lifted up. Father, we thank you for you doing great things. You said, let the redeem of the law say so. Who has redeemed us from the hands of the enemy? Oh, thank you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're going to continue to do. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Oh, oh, God. In Jesus' name. Amen.
No, 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 no. Come on, after a prayer like that, you ought to say something unto the Lord. I know this is a high church moment, but that ought to stir up something in the city of your soul. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. 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 Let us stand together as we lift up the great hymn of the church, glory to his name. The words are found on the last page of your programs. Let's sing it joyfully and with the power of the Holy Ghost as unto the Lord as we're led by this choir singing this great hymn of the church. Come on, let's sing it together. Down, down at the cross where my Savior. Down where for cleansing. the blood of life. We're singing glory. That's good news to somebody. Anybody glad the blood was applied to your life? Covered you. Comforted you. Strengthened you. 
Hallelujah. On your way to your seat, just tell somebody, thank God for the blood. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We celebrate the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For without the shedding of the blood, there would be no remission of sin. Beyond these regalia and rings, we ought to just dance over the blood of Jesus. It still reaches the highest mountain, still flows through the lowest valley. Anybody glad it never loses its power? We thank God for the blood. As we continue in this celebration, we will now have the apostolic letter by the Right Reverend Eric J. Freeman, followed by the presentation by the Right Reverend A. Scott Rawson in that order. Prelature having been established and duly affirmed in our conclave prior to this aggregation, we present now the apostolic letter for the bishop. Jesus Christ was empowered by God and anointed to establish God's kingdom on earth. The church, a mystery that was never seen by the prophets of old, but promised to Abraham by God, was founded on the authority of Jesus Christ. Since the conception of God's church, he has called holy men and endowed them with authority by succession. First, it was the anointing of Christ by God, then the anointing of apostles by Christ, and finally, the empowerment by the apostles of faithful servants. The bishop is a leader, a servant, a chief pastor in God's holy church. The candidate who aspires for the office of the bishop may be selected from among his peers or designated by the hand of the presiding prelate. However, they must meet the scriptural mandates and qualifications. As listed in God's word, the bishop is a person that is seasoned in the faith, one of maturity, not a novice, a defender of the faith and of the flock of God. They must possess the ability to teach, be a teacher of the truth. They must be without blame of good conscience. They must practice monogamy and a person given to much hospitality. A bishop must be a person of a good reputation and character, a practitioner of sound business ethics, and have their testimony and honorable name with good standing from within and outside of the church. The bishop must be disciplined and control of his passions, gentle, not greedy for money, neither argumentative. He should be one who governs his own house and affairs well. He should keep his own children in submission with all reverence. In summarization, God speaks not to the intellect of the bishop, nor is he offended at the bishop's education, elegance, or charisma. Rather, God accents the bishop's personal integrity. Today, there is one that has been called of God and whose life has been examined and observed. He has been appointed by the wisdom of the presiding prelate and has received the endorsement from the people to lead the Lord's church. This candidate, after private examination, has proven to fit and be fit for the office. And we do pray God's anointing upon him that the Lord will grant to him all needful grace and the ability to rule soberly with the authority invested upon him today. 
Amen. Your Grace, Bishop Blue, Bishop Rogers, College of Bishops, the clergy of the Church of God, the Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries, and the people of Kingdom Life Ministries, trusting in the guidance of the Holy Spirit, do hereby present to you James Lee Rosen, Jr., for public consecration to the office of Bishop of the Lord's Church. of the church, and I do pledge myself to render due obedience to the canons of this church, so help me God through Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you have heard the testimony that James Lee Rosen Jr. has been duly and lawfully appointed and designated bishop of the Church of God to serve Christ's body. You have been assured of his suitability and that the church has approved him for this sacred responsibility. Nevertheless, if you know why we should not proceed, let it be made now known. Is it your will that we Consecrate James as a bishop. That is our will. Will you uphold him as he serves as a bishop? We will, by the grace of God. The Lord bless you. We'll now have Bishop Clement Smith come and lead us in the Decalogue as we continue in this celebration. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not take unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. And Jesus said, new commandment I give unto you 
that ye love one another as I have loved you. That's a choral response. Let's sing it. Draw me nearer. Come on. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou As you take your seats, we now have a lesson from the Hebrew Scriptures led by the Right Reverend Floyd Nelson, Jr. Following that, we'll have the reading of the epistle from the Right Reverend James Nelson, Jr. as well in that order. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance in our God, to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of our Lord, that he may be glorified. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. First Timothy four, one through six. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature is of God and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Let us stand to our feet as we prepare for the reading of the gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. You, At this time we'll now be led the reading of the gospel by the right Reverend Kenneth Yelverton. A reading from the gospels, Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 22. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you, scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, 
for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We're now going to be blessed with a song of celebration from the Consecration Chorale. Following that, we'll have the acknowledgement of guests by Elder Robin Ware, and we'll continue to proceed in that order. Amen. Let's praise the Lord as the choir comes. Now, we want you to join in and sing with us today. Amen. Amen. Oh, you 
this morning because he's worthy to be praised oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together we want you to sing this little part with us it goes like this lift him up lift him up lift him up Come on, let's lift him up a little bit more in the room today. Come on. Come on, clap your hands like you know he's worthy. Come on, choir, one more time. Lift him up. Come on, let's bless the Lord. The world is still hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for men to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. I know some of you don't like that no more, but he said, if I be lifted up, not the preacher, not the singer, not the bishop, not the apostle. But he said, if I be lifted up, I dare you to lift up the name Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and shout hallelujah. 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 
That's what the world needs to hear. They don't need to hear about cars, clothes, and cash. They need to hear that there's a savior that still can cure cancer and deliver from diabetes. And we celebrate the name of Jesus today. Come on, bless the Lord for this anointed consecration choir. We thank God for them. We're moving right along. We now have acknowledgement of our gracious guests that are here with us literally from around the world. And those acknowledgements will be shared today by Elder Robin Ware. Following the acknowledgement of guests, we will then be graced with the presence of this gracious and host pastor, Pastor Daryl Jackson, as he comes with special remarks and greetings and will continue to proceed in this order. Amen. Come on, clap your hands as they come. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We are so excited to have each and every one of you here worshiping with us for this very special occasion. Listen, I, of course, want to thank those that are present. First off, just give yourselves a hand. Amen. We thank you so much for coming and sharing with Bishop-elect. We, of course, want to thank, though, the host pastor of this church, Pastor Daryl Jackson. Let's celebrate him. Amen, 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 amen. And then, of course, we are thankful for all of the pastors that are present. Would you please stand or wave your hand? Yes, let's honor our pastors. And then those of you that traveled from out of state, out of town, we appreciate you being here. And then, of course, we want to honor all of Bishop-elect's out-of-town family. Would you all stand, wave your hand? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, of course, we've got some out-of-town friends. Uh, we just wanted to take a moment and recognize uh, Bishop-elect has what he calls his covenant brothers. If you're a covenant brother, if you would wave your hand, let's honor them. Yes, thank you. And then you all know that we'll be celebrating him again very soon as he has, uh, as he will be completing his matriculation through Virginia Union University. So we want to honor and thank uh, his classmates that are here celebrating with him. Dr. John Paul McGee, of course, is a professor at Virginia Union University. We want to thank, of course, Bishop Jason Nelson, Bishop James Nelson. Uh, Sister Crystal is with us, as well as myself and some other VUU folks in the house. We thank God for you all. And then, of course, we want to thank uh, Dr. Teresa Harrison and songwriter David Frazier. And then I have to say that the online audience is on fire, Bishop-elect. They are giving you all kind of accolades and hugs. And of course, we thank them for streaming and hanging in here as we watch uh, the continuation of this amazing service. Again, thank you all for worshiping with us on today. God bless. Good afternoon and praise the Lord, everyone. Of course, I am not Pastor Daryl Jackson, but I am his wife for 43 years. And so that's what I am today. We do honor to Spirit of Christ on today. In Christ is my very life. I can stand before the congregation of people and say that it's in him I move, I live, I have my very being. I heard the psalmstress said uh, in the book of Psalm David, Pastor Rawson, I was glad. How many people glad? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But this is the day, Pastor Rawson, that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice with you and be exceedingly glad. So let's give God a praise for this auspicious day on today. We do bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road here, where this little part of the vineyard is giving God glory, is giving God praise, and is giving God honor. And we're here in the kingdom doing what God has called us to do. The protocol has already been established in the fivefold ministry in the book of the New Testament. He calls some apostles. He calls some evangelists. He calls some prophets, 
and he called some pastors and he called some teacher. So you have already been established in the book of the New Testament. So go out and do what God has called you to do. And to the bishop today, the counselor that God has established, the husband of one wife. We thank God for you, Jimmy. Yes, we thank God. Let's give Jimmy a round of applause. I can say that because I'm family. I'm family, so we thank God for you. And to all my brothers and sisters here that's in Christ today, we say to you all, thank you for coming out supporting Pastor Rawson as he is elevated to the consecration of the office of bishop today. We love Pastor Rawson, and of course, we do love his lovely wife, his beautiful, intelligent, gracious, I can say that because I'm family, lovely wife. Because how many people know when God called a man of God into his vineyard, he calls the woman too. And can't nothing come through this world anyhow except it come through a woman. Uh, so we do thank you all for coming out, supporting this wonderful day with Pastor Rawson and his wife and his family. And we say to you all, if we can do anything for you on this day, please feel free to let our staff know. And we know that Elder Elect Bishop Jamie Jim, uh-huh, <laughs> Rawson, as Cedric, your oldest son, said last night, the best, the best in your elevation is yet to come. God bless you all. May heaven smile upon you. I love you, but God loves you best. Come on, let's celebrate First Lady Jackson and Pastor Jackson in his absence and the grateful host of the Bible Way Church here at Atlas Road. At this time, we'll now have the introduction of the Apostolic Father shared and given by the Most Reverend Michael J. Rogers, Sr. Let's celebrate as he comes. And the people said amen. Amen. Though you have 10,000 instructors, you have not many fathers. Because of his great and grand legacy, because of his notoriety and attraction to thousands of those who are called into the gospel ministry, there's a tendency to gravitate towards an individual and Sometimes familiarity breeds contempt. And I've heard people that have been well-meaning and well-intentioned refer to this gentleman as dad. With much restraint, I attempt to correct them understand that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one son. However, it's been my joy to share him with thousands who look to him for fatherhood. I can authentically say he is indeed the spiritual father of the celebrated today. Would you receive at this time chief apostle for life of the Bible Way Church worldwide, his eminence, chief apostle Huey L. Rogers. Let's give God praise as he comes for the apostolic blessing. You may be seated. I greet you in that name that is above every name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And then every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I uh, just want to know where the apostolic section at. Uh, they don't call me apostolic father just as a title. I believe in one Lord. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. 
one faith and one baptism. Let me give deference and honor to uh, uh, the consecrators that have so eloquently brought this particular occasion to its height. Uh, the Honorable Bishop Blue. God bless you, sir. You are a marvelous, articulate, anointed man of God. And to my own presider, my pastor, that is Apostle Michael Joseph Rogers. To the facilitator, you did an excellent job, sir, in being uh, facilitating this service. James L. Russell. Uh, I want to talk about the person, the preacher, and the praiser. Uh, the person was produced by his biological father and his loving mother. The preacher was mentioned and nurtured by yours truly, Apostle Hugh L. Rogers. The praiser was inherited from David. Every preacher ought to be a praiser. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I just want to say to my son in the gospel, he puts it out all over the world uh, that Apostle Rogers is his father. Well, I've come today to tell you that the blood test has come back. And I am the father. Because of the fact that there's power in the blood of Jesus, it reaches to why the highest mountain flows to the deepest valley. I brought you today a present, and the present that I brought you was the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. And so I say to you today that you are blessed and you are anointed. You continue to do the work and the will of the Lord. I want you to know that your father is very proud of you. I want you to know that the time you spend in Brooklyn as a minister, as a musician, amen, has left an indelible impression upon all of us. And so I'll, I'll, I'll finish it up on Sunday morning, but good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good God Almighty. I want you to know uh, that I've seen why the lightning flashing and I heard the, the thunder roll. I, 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 I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I want you to know that preach the word of God, hold the standard high, and continue to do the work of the Lord. I see you Sunday morning. Come on, let's celebrate Apostle Huey Rogers. There's only one. I was waiting for him to say tabletop. I mean, Lord, if he'd have pulled the table out, we'd still be dancing. Let's thank God for those amazing and powerful words of expression coming from the father of the faith. At this time, we'll now be led in our ministry of giving by the most Reverend Melvin Williams, Jr. As he comes, let's prepare our hearts to give unto the Lord joyfully and generously. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. It is of the Lord's mercies we've not been consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. I salute you in the matchless name of Jesus, and I'm thankful to be here today to share uh, doing this consecration of my good friend and brother. Um, and he calls me Uncle Melvin. And I want to share with you something because the other day I was, uh, we're in a, our annual 48 consecration and I 
it was about three or four o'clock in the evening and we just left the uh, restaurant. My nickname is Mr. Restaurant and uh, we were having vegetables for this consecration and at the end of us having our little um, vegetable feast, I received a call and uh, uh, Al Brandon and myself uh, were, we were having this uh, little outing and the call was from uh, Bishop Ross. He said, Uncle Melvin, I want you to do the offering. And I said, what? He said, I want you to do the offering. I said, Jimmy, what are you talking about? You got the best people in the world to do the offering. And as a matter of fact, one that really taught me how to give and got my money from me the first time I was in a service with him, I came with about $220 and I left with $20. That was Apostle, Chief Apostle Hugh Rice. Got all my money and packed myself on the back and told the Lord thank you and went home and didn't realize I had given all my money except gas money to get back home. But I learned something. I learned something from that day. I won't forget the rest of it though. After I gave that off and he prayed for me that God would bless me. And I learned from that David said to Ornan, I will offer the Lord nothing unless it costs me. I also learned that the essence of living is giving. God so loved the world that he gave him because he give, we give also. And as I learned that lesson, I, from that day forward, I always gave God my best. And uh, God have blessed me to year, live now, three score and 10, and I'm on my if by chance time now. But what I learned also is that God will never ever forget your labor of love. When you learn how to give of your tithe, your talent, and your time, God will do things for you that you never could imagine. The prayer that he prayed over me was that God would bless me. And God would bless me so that in 73 years of life, I thought about it, look back and I'm learning every day. I've never been to the hospital but twice in my life. I went for birth and I went another time um, because the doctor saw um, a cyst on my kidneys, so just last year, I went in and when they looked at the cyst, they found out the cyst, the cyst was malignant. I said all that to say that God is true to his word. God is true to his word. So every opportunity I get to give, I give. And uh, I was home the other night on the consecration, I got a call from New York. It was uh, Dr. Bernard Jordan. Call said to me, he said, I can't be for uh, Bishop Rawson's consecration, but I tell you what, he said, what are you planning to give? I said, well, I plan to give $1,000. He said, well, I'll give what you give. I said, well, I'll give two. <laughs> and he sent his gift and said that only because he was not able to be here, but he wanted to give his gift. So I share that with you today and said to those of you that's here, this is the year to raise your expectation. Raise your expectation. Whatever you want God to do for you, trust him. He's able. I said he's able. I said he's able. I don't care what it is. He said, ask me a hard thing. Is there anything too hard for God? Blessed is the man that trusts in him. And the person you trust, you'll never rob. I said, the person you trust, you'll never rob. You don't rob people that you trust. 
you give, you bless, you honor. And when you honor them, God will honor you. So I want you to say, I want to say tonight, I want everybody to honor the Lord with gifts, and I want to say to as many as can, I want you to honor the Lord, those of you that's able, and I don't do this all the time, but I want everybody that's able to bless the Lord with a thousand dollars to do that today because God will bless you with a thousand times or more. You laugh today, but you'll be blessed tomorrow if you just do what God say do. And I'm only talking to your, those that's able. I want everybody to do the best you can. And if you don't have nothing, if you don't have nothing and there's a person beside you, ask them to bless you with a seed. Because all of us in here are blessed to be a blessing. And I challenge you to do that today. I want all of the bishops, and all of the apostles, and everybody that can, you know where you live. And God know where you live. I want you to give how you live. And I want you to honor God first today. Are you with me? I want you to do that today. I want you to honor God first. As many as can today. Mm -hmm. As you're preparing your hearts and gifts to give, I want to take this moment since we are a great cloud of witnesses of God's healing power, his restoring power, God's delivering power. I want us to pause for a moment. I just need some intercessors. Even as we're preparing to give sacrificially, let's fill this atmosphere with the sound of intercession. Yes, sir. On behalf of our dear family member that whatever it is, I believe when you've got Holy Ghost power, you don't need to know details. You just need to know the deliverer. Come on, I just need you to lift up your heavenly language. Let's intercede that no weapon that's formed against their body shall prosper. Thank you. No sickness shall succeed. No illness will prevail. I still believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. Pray for them like you want somebody to pray yes. for you. Fight for them like you need somebody to fight for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. we stand in the gap today. I agree, God. Whatever it is, we leave by the power of the Holy Ghost that it shall be yes, sir. covered by the blood, Thank you. delivered by the blood, Thank you. removed by the blood. Thank you. We pray whatever's elevated, bring it down. Whatever's low, bring it up. Regulate the body. Regulate the mind. Father, we believe in your power. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you even now. We pray for the medical professionals. We pray you give them guidance, give them strength. God, we thank you for healing. We thank you for strength. Death, you have no place in a body. Thank you. Defeat you shall receive. Father, we thank you now. Thank you, Lord. We shall not be distracted Lord. nor discouraged. Yes, Lord. But clap your hands and shout, I am delivered. I couldn't take it no longer. We got tired of talking about money. Let's talk about deliverance. Thank you. Come on, open your mouth like God is a healer. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I need a few just to walk the aisle. We'll get back to the consecration in a minute. Open your mouth and give them a shout of glory. Open your mouth and begin to travail in the spirit. Saints, come on. Thank you, Lord. We almost there. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Come on, we can't do too progressive that we move away from the old school power of the intercessory prayer. When the saints begin to pray, then the Lord will have his way. Thank you. And the glory of the Lord will come on down. Somebody shout, send it on down, Lord. 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 
Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. Thank come you, on Lord. down. Thank you. Thank you. Turn me up, sound man. Yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear the Lord say, now that we prayed about it, let's seal it with a praise. Yes. You ought to praise him like what you just prayed for has already been answered. Oh! Hallelujah! Come on, clap your hands like you're sanctified. Oh! Clap your hands like you're sanctified. Yes! Come on! Come on, bishops, clap your hands. Overseers, clap your hands. Pastors and elders, come on! Let everything! Yes! Hey! Come on, 30 more seconds! Hey! While she's in the ambulance, she's being healed! Forget about what you got on. Give it to him like you know he's worthy. Give it to him like you know he deserves it. God bless you. your mouth and shout yes Lord yes Lord, yes, Lord. Yeah. hallelujah the devil must be out of his cotton picking mind thinking he gonna walk up in here and afflict one of us hallelujah we love a good time to intercede yes sir because we know when the saints begin to pray miracles got to happen yes, sir. When the saints begin to pray, yes. doors begin to open. And that's what this moment is for. Clap your hands. Woo, let's give them glory. Come on, clap your hands and give them glory. Hallelujah. Bless your bishop. Under the directions of, your, of the ushers, let's keep shouting and dancing under the direction of, your, of the ushers. Let's bring the best gifts we can to the Lord. The best gift we can. Thank God for a reset button. Let's dance with our gifts all the way around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can cash out if you're viewing KLM Nation. Dollar sign KLM Nation. For those of you that's viewing, God's got a miracle with your name on it. 
the year of supernatural manifestation. And those of you that's viewing, you can cash out, dollar sign, KLM Nation. Give and it shall be given unto you. And we, and we have envelopes that you can give other ways as desired. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Angels still bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. It's good to know that as progressive as we have become, we have never strayed away from the foundation where our power lies, and that is in the presence of the Lord through intercessory prayer. And we're grateful for that. We believe that God is doing what no other power can do, healing, delivering, and continuing to set free. As we continue in this celebration of elevation and consecration, we'll now be led in a song of celebration by this consecration choir. And following the selection, we will then proceed with the examination of our consecration candidate. Let's praise the Lord as they come in that order.
I've been to some valleys. I have been no oh, so very low. I have had some rough times. Some people have really hurt me so. But Jesus was a friend. Ooh, he was consistent in every way. When Satan tried to kill me, he came in. And even though Satan still exists, he will never have control, control of my soul. I've been through some valleys, yeah. I have been, no, oh, so very low. I have had some rough times. Yes, I have. Some people have really hurt me so. But Jesus was a friend. He was a friend. your neighbor and tell her, I'm still saved. God bless you. Thank you. The examination. Your bishop elect would you heed the words and the admonition given to you? My brother, you've been set aside today by your fellow bishops, apostles, and pastors because of your desire to serve in the office of bishop of the Lord's Church. The people of the Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries and the Kingdom Life Church 
have affirmed their trust in you by acclaiming your election. A bishop in God's holy church is called to be one of the apostles in proclaiming Christ's resurrection, interpreting the gospel and testifying to Christ's sovereignty. As Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the church of Jesus Christ has expressed great confidence in you, your character, your devotion to Christ and the church, and in your ability to direct the affairs and promote the general interest of the church in that she has signally honored you by selecting you to this high office. You've also been chosen by the Lord. Remember that you were chosen from among human beings and appointed to act for men and women in relation to God. The title bishop is not one of hollow prestige, but of holy privilege. Therefore, a bishop should strive to serve rather than rule. Such as the counsel of a master, the greater should behave as if he were the laced, and the leader as one, as the one who serves. You are called to guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the church, to celebrate and provide for the administration of the sacraments of the new covenant to assist in ordaining elders, and to be in all things a faithful pastor, a wholesome example for the entire flock of Christ. Therefore, I charge you to maintain a deportment that will inspire brothers and sisters of this great body to follow your leadership as directed by the Holy Spirit or by delegated authority. I charge you to develop a deeper sensitivity to the moving of the Spirit of God. Live holy. Read and study the Bible so that you might and may rightly divide the word of truth. I charge you to be merciful to all, to show compassion to the poor and strangers, to defend those who have no help. With your fellow bishops, you will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Are you persuaded and committed to God that you will serve the people and give your all to the office of bishop? I am so persuaded. Will you accept this call and fulfill this trust in obedience to Christ? I will obey Christ and will serve in his name. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the study of the Holy Scriptures that you may have the mind of Christ? I will, for he is my help. Will you boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ, enlightening the minds and stirring up the conscience of your people? I will, in the power of the Spirit. As chief priest and pastor, will you encourage and support all baptized people in their gifts and ministries, nourish them from the riches of God's grace. Pray for them without ceasing and celebrate with them the sacraments of our redemption. I will, in the name of Christ, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Will you guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the church? I will, by the strength of God. Will you share with your fellow bishops in the government of the whole church? Will you sustain your fellow presbyters 
and take counsel with them that will guide, or rather that you will guide and strengthen uh, the deacons and all others who minister in the church. I will by the grace given me. Will you be merciful to all, show compassion to the poor and strangers, and defend those who have no helper? I will for the sake of Christ Jesus our Lord. James, through these promises, you have committed yourself to God to serve his church in the office of bishop. We therefore call upon you, chosen to be a guardian of the church's faith, to lead us in confessing that faith. We believe in one God. And unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin. I resign my gracious redeemer, my Savior, art thou? If ever I love. 
my Jesus tease Make it yours. My cheese. Say it one more time with me. My cheese. It's now. We shall stand and receive the most Reverend Michael Anthony Bilou, presiding prelate of CCFM, Marion, South Carolina. Receive him by saying, Amen. Amen. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Let's, let's everybody just offer God some thanksgiving some adoration adulation adoration i want you to give god some ad extol him esteem him laud him applaud him 
The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 says, By him therefore let us offer to God the sacrifice of praise continually, even the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. I want you to thank him right there where you stand. Hallelujah. Praise him right there where you stand. If ever I loved thee, hey, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord whose mercy endures forever. There is none, there is none, there is none like him. God bless you. Please be seated for just a moment. We'll stand again for uh, a moment of prayer, but I want to ask you to be seated presently. I want to say out of the depth of my heart, what a tremendous privilege and honor it is to witness this occasion to witness this occasion, to be a part, a participant in some way is an even greater honor, but just to be a witness because we believe that this is a kingdom of God development. Uh, I thought about the statement that was made by Secretary of State Seward at the time of the passing of President Lincoln. And he meant it in a rather morbid way when President Lincoln had expired. He said, now he belongs to the ages. Now he belongs to the ages. And uh, I believe that, again, not in a morbid sense, but I believe that in a prophetic sense, in a destiny sense, that we confirm that today this dear brother belongs to the ages in a different kind of way. That is, that is, that is the impact and the imprint of his life shall prove to have ageless implication. Now he belongs to the ages. I want you to clap your hands if you agree with that. I, I realize that these occasions have, they are diverse. They, they have some very strong strengths, but then they also have some challenges. And one of the challenges is that we never really get to say all or to do all that needs to be said or to be done. And so we're going to uh, do our best to contextualize this moment. I say that because I know the protocols have been established, but there are so many luminaries and dignitaries in the midst, so many who are influential in so many different realms that I would be remiss if I didn't pause for a moment and at least categorically as well as name a few, but categorically recognize and acknowledge these various ones. We thank God for our presiding officer, our expediter, presiding bishop, Herbert Crump. We are honored to be in your presence, sir. Honored. And thank you for being an efficient officiant. Amen. We're grateful to God for the house in which we dwell. Thank God for Pastor Darrell and Lady Willie May, Pastor Willie May Jackson. We appreciate them. We thank God. We honor them highly. You know that this iconic man of God who shared just a little bit uh, earlier, presented by his iconic son a little earlier, is due another uh, expression of deference. Can we thank God for Apostle Michael Rogers and Chief Apostle Huey L. Rogers. 
And uh, I'm, I uh, was made aware last night that Apostle Showell was present. I didn't know if he would be here today, but I just wanted to acknowledge his having been present. Thank God for, for him having been, having been present. Uh, to the presidium, as some refer to it, the presiding bishops of the Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries, Bishop Bobby Hilton, Bishop Louis T. Hilton, Jr., Bishop Melvin Lambert, we honor the two of you, gentlemen. God bless, God bless these men of God. They stand in a special place in the kingdom of God, and we honor their spouses as well. Dr. Valda in her absence, Pastor Charlotte Lambert in her presence. Amen. Thank God. And then all of the presiding bishops and presiding prelates who are a part of this gathering, we realize that your time and your opportunities are so constricted and the fact that you would take the time, invest the time to be here with us, uh, to share on such an occasion, it is not to be taken lightly. And so those of you who appreciate these uh, men of God, these servants of the Lord who have given themselves, even women of God in Episcopal offices who've given themselves for the work of God. Can we applaud them and thank God for them? Thank you, Father. Our chief officer of protocol who certainly continues to serve in so many uh, powerful ways. Let's thank God for Bishop William Young. Let's appreciate him. And listen, all clergy, all of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to all of the moderators and overseers, and to all of the elders, ministers, deacons, to all of the trustees and stewards and stewardesses, to the auxiliary chairpersons, auxiliary members, members at large, friends and well wishes to the civic officials who are or who have been or who shall be present. And to every individual that is a part of this aggregation that composes this congregation, we thank God for you because everybody is somebody in the Father's house. You agree with that? Let's make a noise that says you agree. Amen. Amen. I wanted to mention, I've got a few more mentions. I wanted to mention Bishop Carl H. Montgomery. Such a sage, such a powerful gift to the body of Christ. He desired and planned to be here today. But just difficulties, logistical and otherwise, hindered and hampered his progress. But his mark is on this meeting because of his impartation into the life of uh, bishop elect and because of his serving as an Episcopal catechist in the CCFM's training module, the Leadership Institute. And so let's thank God for, I hope he's watching or at least gets the replay. Let's honor Bishop Montgomery, Bishop Carl H. Montgomery. Thank God. I want to acknowledge my wife. I cannot uh, stand here and not acknowledge my wife, Pastor Melinda Blue. I appreciate her. Thank God for her. A Amen. And to all of the CCFM bishops and affiliates who have come to show their uh, allegiance to their man of God, to their brother and, and, and some, as mother would say, son in the Lord, can we thank God for the CCFM affiliates? God bless you. Thank God for each of you that are present. Amen. And then to this first family, to this first family, mm. to the first lady, I've had the privilege of, of walking fairly closely with her as I've walked with him. And if there is a word that, that would sort of encapsulate who she is, one of those words, I'm thinking of two actually, but one of them would be authentic. And the other would be integral. She is, she is, uh, as Jesus said concerning Nathaniel, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. In other words, you don't have to worry about any trickery. I didn't hear you say much right there. 
Can you join me in giving a most diligent, a most committed and loyal woman of God a round of applause? Thank God for the First Lady of the Kingdom Life Ministries. First Lady, Andrina Ross, Jackson Ross. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. And listen, I'm telling you, this entire family, Mother Rawson, Brother Bishop, Elect Rawson, Sisters Rawson, uh, listen, they and the sons and, 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 and the daughters in love, we were so blessed yesterday in those presentations. Uh, there was no room for us to do any weeping because we were sitting near the fountain. Oh, my. And uh, gentlemen, you all did an outstanding, a, 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 a distinguished, you, you didn't just give a bunch of, of ramblings, but everything was so poignant, so articulate, and uh, it speaks powerfully of your siring. We thank the Lord. Can we thank God for this family? <laughs> Amen. And then to... The bishop elect himself. To the bishop elect himself, we have been acquainted over 30 years. Over 31 years because the Door of Hope just turned 31 last month. And we were covenant friends and brothers before there was a Door of Hope church. This man came into my life at a time where there was void. And our God has a way of filling voids. From the time that he and I became acquainted, we have been, and I'm sure that actually my experience is not unique. It's unique in that it's mine but it's not unique because he carries this, this thing about him in which once you're connected, you are inextricably, this means you can't untie it, untangle it, you are inextricably linked to his life. He is a man of character, a man of valor, but perhaps even more importantly than that, a man of a great heart. He has the stature of Saul, the son of Kish, but he has the heart of Saul's successor. And the reason why Saul couldn't get away with not killing certain animals and leaving a few Amalekites alive, and David could conspire to murder and murder and cover it up for about two years, and God still has such a connection to him that his repentance prayer would include these words, take not thy Holy Spirit. Which means that after all that he'd done, the Spirit had not left him. Why did the Spirit stay with Saul's successor after having departed from Saul himself? It is because there was a difference in the heart. Before David knew that God was looking at him, before David had had, Lord, I praise your name, an encounter with the prophet Samuel, God spoke through Samuel to Saul and said, I have found a neighbor of yours who's better than you. He said he's a man while David was still a boy. He's a man after my own heart. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest attribute of this dear man of God is the heart that he has, the heart for God, and through that heart, the heart for people. If you know who I'm talking about, I want you to let's give deference and let's give honor to a work of art who is a man of heart. I want you to clap your hands and let's thank God.
for Bishop Elect James L. Rawson. I made one statement in error. David was not Saul's successor, he was Saul's replacement. And there is a fundamental difference between succession and replacement. Succession is in the will of God. Replacement is the judgment of God. And I need you to understand that this that we are doing right now and that we are going to do in a few minutes in pouring oil and laying hands will be the succession of some and the replacement of others. This brother has been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. One other point and I'll leave it. One other statement and I'll leave it. We won't have this next year. We won't have this next decade. I am convinced of all that I've said concerning him, how he is musically the maestro and such a preacher, such a preacher. Oh my. Uh, he, he, he'll sort of brush it off and um, he'll say things like he was, he was teaching something or what have you. And I say this to him, he's a preacher who might teach, but he's going to preach. And uh, I'm convinced though, even though I, I love that, he, he's a student, he's a historian, we said earlier, but I'm convinced of this truth. See if you agree with me. I am convinced that it is a universally recognized truism that everybody knows Jimmy. Everybody knows. Now, it's one thing for, for, for you to be a fan of somebody, you know, a celebrity. And so, you, oh, yeah, I know uh, Oprah. I know. Now, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you know who that person is. I mean, wherever we go, if you don't believe it, show up somewhere where there's somebody famous and let him be in the midst. Sooner or later, either the person or someone in the entourage, Jimmy. Amen. Wait, wait, wait. How, how many have experienced? Anybody experienced that? I'm sure his family just... You know, they stand in awe. And uh, uh, Bishop Freeman and I have said many times that, that when he goes to the Vatican, you can be sure. He may not speak Italian, but when somebody interprets it, somebody's going to be saying in Italian, Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> all right, all right. I want to ask that you would join me in prayer if you don't mind, stand just for a moment in, in prayer, and uh, I'm going to do my very best to abbreviate uh, this after all apostles coming tomorrow, and we know that's going to be so powerful. The preacher preached last night so powerfully. Amen. What kind of point was it? Inflection point. And now, Father, we thank you for the privilege of being a part of this hallelujah, this moment. And Father, we've learned from you that if we properly manage a moment, that moment can become a movement. Help us to be stewards of this moment. You have entrusted James Rawson into our hands for this occasion. No man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron under the old covenant, and as your fivefold ministry is under the new. And so, Father, you have entrusted us to support and escort and accompany our brother as he transitions. We ask you, O oh God, to get honor and get glory and get praise, get fame in what we will share and what we will do in the proceedings that follow. 
We ask you, oh God, that you will let your spirit sit in our midst. Thank you for sitting upon us. Thank you for being enthroned upon our worship and our praise. I acknowledge that without you I am nothing and I can do nothing without you but with you. All things are possible to him that believeth. Lord, we do believe. Please help thou our unbelief. Thank you for the tongue of the learned. And thank you for authority and power over every spirit. Every spirit called subject to the word of God, to the Holy Ghost, to the blood, and to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Be thou exalted, we pray. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you agree with that prayer, begin to praise him right where you are. Praise him right where you are, brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Let's... Um, Let's go to the book of Proverbs, the book of Ephesians, the book of First Peter. Very brief readings, very brief readings. And I give you praise, Father. Thank you for your presence. Book of Proverbs, chapter 17, the book of Ephesians. Chapter 4 and the book of First Peter, chapter 4 as well. Thank God, uh, Bishop Nelson, Dr. Harrison, Elder Ware. So, so, again, luminaries, dignitaries, and we honor all of you. Proverbs chapter 17, Ephesians chapter 4, First Peter chapter 4. And to those of you who are streaming, please don't let me omit you because there are many, many more who if opportunity had presented itself would be present. May we say thank God so much for your love, for your engagement, for the honor that you have for the man of God. Those of you who've given, thank you for your generosity as well as those in the congregation. If you have not yet given, it's not too late. Uh, I'm sure the media team can put that information up later, later, but they'll put that information back up for the benefit of those who may need it. Amen to that. The book of Proverbs chapter 17. Uh, may, I, may I have just a, a little more monitor if, if I don't cause a problem with it? I can deal with whatever, but if you can spare it, that would be most appreciated. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 8. The Bible reads uh, as follows. A gift is as a precious stone. In the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. And then the book of Ephesians chapter 4. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 8 and then verse 11. Wherefore... He saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And then finally, 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter Four and verse 10. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Hmm. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If you will allow me, if you will allow me, I would like to call this eclectic grace. 
eclectic grace, but let's follow with a colon, the turn of James. Eclectic grace, colon, the turn of James. <clears throat> One more time, uh, eclectic grace, the turn of uh, James. Ladies and gentlemen, not only have I witnessed everybody knows Jenny, Jimmy, but, but I have had the privilege, and, and I know many of you are more deeply acquainted with him than I, and associated with him than I. You see him more frequently, talk to him on the phone more frequently. But God has allowed me to experience punctuation points in his life that have been evolutionary. I have witnessed this man's evolution. Major portion, at least the, the, the past 30 plus years, I've, I've witnessed an evolution. I've witnessed shiftings in his life. I've watched God, I've watched God give him appetite for that which he once shunned. I've seen God give him a palate and an acquired taste for things that he once fled. When I met him, he was primarily evangelist. His work was primarily itinerant and uh, he loved it just that way. But I have the privilege of walking with him and listening to him and because he's a man of heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak F. If you listen to him, you'll hear his heart. And his heart began to trend away from the evangelistic and toward the pastoral. And I saw him struggle with it. I saw him be frustrated with it. I, I, I saw him try to make himself all right, not shepherding. I saw him try to talk himself out of it and try to get others of us to help to talk him out of it. And of course, as everybody knows, Jimmy, the prophets are always going to be prophesying in the other direction. And uh, I saw evangelist Jimmy become pastor James Rossell. Then not only that, but I've watched him as he transitioned with regard to this work. Ladies and gentlemen, this dear brother did not come tagging along, begging somebody to put a miter on his head. And one of the reasons why I can say that is because there are too many who would have been more than willing and more than eager to put the miter on his head so they could put the tether on his life and the shackles on his hands and they could own him, ride him as their claim to fame. But at the same time, I watched God shift his appetite, shift his perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, we live based upon our perspective. The greatest influencer in our lives is whatever perspective that we embrace. Call it paradigm, call it worldview, perspective. How we see and interpret reality is the driver for how we live our lives. And God shifted his perspective. Said another way, I've walked with him through the pregnancies seeing him pregnant with the next. Uh -huh. and some of them have been difficult pregnancies. And uh, it has been said that uh, sisters have said that once they get through with this one, you don't have to worry about me having any more. But uh, this particular spiritual womb is a very fertile one. If you know anything about this, dear brother, he is imagination with a capital I. And if you don't have any, enough imagination for yourself, he'll give you some. 
He'll share with you what you ought to be doing with what it is God has given you. But I'm grateful to be able to testify that this fertile womb that God has given him is based upon passion and hunger, not mere ambition. He has had the opportunity to play the field and manipulate manipulators. There's a fundamental difference between carnal ambition and holy zeal. A fundamental difference, but sometimes to look at them, you can't tell them apart. But I believe that we are here tonight or this afternoon because the zeal of God's house has eaten James Rawson up. Can the church say something? Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, he has aspired unto the bishopric. He has desired, the Bible says, a good work. The, the bishopric, my brothers and sisters, is, let's talk about it for a moment, an apostolic office. Don't draw up. If you don't call your church apostolic, I don't just mean water baptism in Jesus' name according to Acts 2 and 38. We believe in that, but that's not all we mean when we say apostolic. I mean capital A apostolic. I mean the apostolos. I mean the one who is sent forth with the full authority and authorization of the sender, equipped and authorized to act on behalf of the sender as though he or she were the sender. Some synonyms are words like ambassador or emissary. A bishop is an apostolic office. Everybody say apostolic office. Now, uh, we've learned uh, that there are several degrees of apostle. There are several dimensions or several, Brother Hagin said, classes of apostle. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons why we find people saying there are no more apostles is because they don't understand the distinctions within the office. Mm -hmm. For example, the first class is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who according to Hebrews 3 and 1 is the high priest and the apostle of our profession. It's a closed class. Uh -huh. And then there are the 12 apostles of the Lamb who according to Peter in chapter 1 of Acts have to have been eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry from the baptism of John to his resurrection. A closed class. Then thirdly there is the foundation laying scripture writing apostle who is not Jesus, closed class, who is not 12 apostles of the Lamb, closed class, but is one who is in inspired directly and dealt with by directly by God to establish the church. We're speaking of men such as James and Jude, the brothers of the Lord Jesus, and of course the great rabbi uh -huh, of Tarsus, uh, Saul. And uh, the Bible lets us know that this also is a closed class. But there is a fourth class of apostle, and I submit to you a fifth. The fourth is that Ephesians 4, 11, where the Bible said, and he gave some Mm -hmm. And he gave some uh, and some and some. He said some apostles. I'll omit verse 12 and go to verse 13 where the Bible said till we all come. Mm -hmm. So that means they're going to outlast class one as far as on the earth, class two and class three. On the earth there will be apostles till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So there is an apostle, there is the office of apostle in the earth that is an authentic office that man or that woman has a dramatic encounter with the living Christ and his ministry is accompanied and confirmed by signs, wonders, mighty deeds. That individual tends to be establishmentarian, restorer of doctrine, restorer of lost truths, revealer of truths that have not yet been uh, explored in a given era, given earlier, but, but the faith that 
was once and for all delivered to the same. Some things have been lost. The, the, the apostle brings those things back. He recovers those things that have been lost. But then there's the fifth class that I like to speak about because that's what's pertinent to our discussion today. And that is that there is the individual who is not necessarily the apostle in that sense of Ephesians 4, but that man or that woman is called to an apostolic work. In other words, there are aspects of the office of apostle that operate in his or her life. I'm talking about the administrative role of being a father to fathers and a feeder to feeders and a leader to leaders and a lifter to lifters to be someone who is a prototype and a template for ministry in a given era or generation or season. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that I just described to you is a part of what it means uh, to be a bishop in the Lord's church. If a man or if a woman is a bishop, his, his or her primary fivefold ministry gift may not be apostle, but there will be an apostolic grace. Yeah that governs his or her life. Matter of fact, my dear brother, the sisters, if you go back to uh, Ephesians 4 and go to verse 7, the Bible said to every one of us, grace has been given. And if we understood that, we would stop competing with one another for certain platforms. And we would stop having a tug of war about certain microphones because if the Bible is right and if grace is given to every one of us, then that says to me that if God has called you to be an attorney, he has called you to be a prophetic attorney. If he's called you to be a doctor, he's called you to be an apostolic doctor. In other words, you're going to be a trendsetter in your dimension. You understand that I'm telling you that even though you may not be the thing, you can have the grace of the thing in your thing. I wish we had a little time for that, but, uh, but we do not. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I say to you that uh, the bishop is, uh, the bishop is, because the apostle is, a guardian of the faith. Hmm. I'll say it again. I said a bishop in the truest sense, even in the historic sense, going back to church history uh, post the first century, including, but post the, the first century, all the way down through the third and, 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 and fourth uh, uh, centuries of the Christian era and some further, uh, <laughs> and some further. The bishop is a defender, a guardian of the faith. Uh, would somebody say, hallelujah, the apostle is the guardian of the faith. Uh, Lord, have mercy. I, okay, all right, all right. The apostle is, the, so a bishop is a guardian of the faith because that's a part of his apostolic calling. Notice this, notice that the pastor guards the flock, but the apostle guards the faith. Uh -huh. When we say guard, we mean defend and proliferate. Defend it, that is protect it and proliferate it, enhance it so that it grows qualitatively and quantitatively. Can I get somebody to say something? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The pastor uh, guards the flock, the apostle guards the faith. Now, when we say the faith, uh, the faith includes the flock because the faith is the entire body of belief and practice uh, uh, of the followers of Christ, inclusive of those who embrace such belief and practice. I said the faith, quote unquote, includes the flock because it is the entire body of belief and practice uh -huh, that followers of Christ embrace, uh -huh, including those themselves who embrace. So, so my dear brothers and sisters, we need to go back to Paul and apologize. Because we've gone to 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul is giving uh, his uh, final uh, 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 doxology and his, uh, his uh, as it were, swan song, one great man of God said. Uh, he's giving uh, his own epitaph. Nobody else has to write it for him uh -huh, because he eloquently says, I have fought. Mm, a good fight. I have finished uh, my course. Uh, uh, Bishop Nelson, Bishop Yelberton, he says, I have kept the 
faith. And listen to what we've done with that. We have watered that down and done with it what we've done to so much of the faith of God. We made it self-centered. And we say, Paul said, I have retained my personal convictions. Uh -huh. That's what people think of when they say that Paul says, I've kept the faith. They mean, I, I, things got hard, but baby, I kept on shouting. Uh, things got rough, but sure and I held on to Jesus. That's, that's your personal conviction being retained. Paul is not saying I retain my personal conviction. That should be obvious. What he's saying is I have been the guardian of the entirety of the body of belief and practice in the name of Jesus Christ. I have guarded this thing when there have been heretics when there have been skeptics when there have been Gnostics and agnostics I have defended the faith of Jesus Christ and would to God that we would stop being so infatuated with appointments and vestments and decide that we understand that we have been called to guard the faith the apostle Jude said when I gave heed when I gave mine when I gave intention to write to you concerning the common salvation it was needful to, for me huh, to write unto you and to exhort you huh, that you should earnestly huh, contend huh, not for your faith for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not careful in our churches where we speak in tongues and burn sage, we have become sanctified syncretists. Sanctified in terms of our worship style, but syncretist in terms of our theology. We take a little bit of roots and a little bit of the occult and a little bit of witchcraft and a little bit of Wicca and a little bit of Islam. And, uh, oh, yeah, and a whole lot of Judaism. <laughs> and mix it up and call it Jesus. sanctified syncretism because we don't have enough brothers and sisters who will guard the faith are you listening to me there is a the faith and may I say that that guarding the faith has three elements two elements that are primarily public but really three elements uh -huh. thank you sir I didn't even read the, that particular text but it's okay I'm the teacher he he's the okay anyway ladies and gentlemen I need you to understand that guarding the faith has three public elements or two elements rather one of them that is a pre a for, foregone conclusion and that is uh -huh, the domestic the didactic and the dynamic. Uh, 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 if you're going to guard the faith, you're going to have to operate in at least those three realms. Uh, 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 you're going to have to understand the power of the domestic, uh, the didactic, and uh, the dynamic. Uh, the domestic means you got to live it before you preach it. Uh, the domestic means, oh God, uh, the domestic means uh, that as the preacher, as Bishop read it earlier today, uh, he said that that man does not know how uh, to rule his own house. How shall he be able to take care of the house of God? If it doesn't work in the domestic, uh, forget about trying to put it out here for somebody else to live by it. And you can't walk by it yourself. Oh, and I need you to understand that there is, uh, there are varying anointings, uh, but when it comes to living out the word, uh, the preaching anointing does not empower you to live it. I said the preaching anointing does not empower you to live the word of God. As a matter of fact, we are taught in the, the Bible, in the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus said in verse 18, there's a spirit, the spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me. He said in Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So there is an upon you anointing. But first John chapter 2 says us there's an anointing within us. Uh -huh, there's an anointing within. Uh -huh, and there's an anointing upon. Uh -huh, the anointing upon you. It's what enables you to minister to others. Huh? But the anointing within you huh? is what empowers you to live holy yourself. Huh? And the reason why you got holy preachers huh? and the reason why you got lying prophets huh? and the uh, yeah, huh? and messy missionaries huh? is because God has given them an anointing upon, huh? but they have not cultivated.
made it. The anointing within. The brothers, the sisters, there, there are three elements. Two of them are public. Domestic is private, uh -huh, but it gets out. Uh -huh. So there, you guard the faith by your domestic deportment. You, you, you guard the faith by how you treat your wife. You guard your husband. You, you guard the faith by how you take care of your children. You guard the faith by your credit rating. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You, you, you guard the faith by your reputation in the street. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ask the drunks if he's saved. Uh -huh. Because the drunks know who's a real preacher and who ain't hitting on nothing. You have to be from South Carolina to understand ain't hitting on nothing, Bishop. I'm sorry. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, my dear brothers and sisters, first the domestic. Let me run. Uh huh. That's in uh, uh, First Timothy chapter three. Then there is the didactic. Thank God for the didactic. Now these two elements, Paul talks about them in the book of Philippians uh, chapter one. He he said to the saints at Philippi, he says that you are set with me. You have you have become my partners. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter 1. Uh, thank you, sir. He said in uh, the 7th verse, he says uh, because I have you in my heart, because in as much as both in my bonds uh, and in the defense and confirmation uh, of the gospel, ye all are partakers uh, of my grace. Uh, the bonds uh, could represent the domestic situation, his natural situation, but then he deals with two others. For, uh, secondly, the didactic in order to guard back up Brother Blue. Ladies and gentlemen, if your domestic life is a sham, the world will not listen to our witness. The world does not primarily incriminate us because of what we believe. It primarily incriminates us when we say we believe it and don't live it. We guard the faith when we are ardent defenders by living it. All right. So number one, uh, the domestic. Secondly, the didactic. That's the preaching, the teaching, the reasoning. What did he say in Matthew 28, 18 through 20? Jesus came and spake to them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and do what? Teach. Uh, all nations. Literally make disciples of all nations. Uh, uh, preaching makes believers. Teaching makes disciples. Uh, we must be a reasoning people. We must be a people who optimize the sermon and the seminar and the brochure and the PowerPoint and, and then digital media and social media. We must be a people who without, uh, without embarrassment and without inhibition uh, appeal to the intellect, appeal to the rational. Uh, how many know the faith of God is a rational a reasonable thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, it is uh, to appeal to the cognitive, to the cerebral. Uh, in other words, we must be a people of the reason. We must be a people of the apologia. We must be the people of 1 Peter 3.15, which says, sanctify the Lord always in your heart and be ready always to give an answer uh, to every man that asks you a reason of the hope uh, that lies in you. We must be uh, a people who defend a uh, guard the faith in the domestic uh, and then in the didactic. How many know this man of God has been attested unto by his family that he's walking out the domestic? Uh, uh -huh, and we can all witness that he is definitely an exemplar of the didactic. Uh, yes, sir. If anybody can preach, uh, Jimmy Rawson uh, is a preacher. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Uh, and again, I say to you, brothers and sisters, uh, that we must be a reasoning people. Uh, it's not enough to hoop, uh, uh, but there's nothing wrong with hooping. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. There, 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 there's nothing wrong uh, with giving it out the way he put it in you. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, make sure uh, that you are able to answer the hard questions. Uh, hoop or non-hoop. Uh, make sure you are able to give a reason. Uh, Lord, I bless you in the book of 2 Corinthians. Y'all still okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare. Here we are. Are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to what? The pulling down of strongholds. Doing what? Casting down imaginations uh, and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every one thought to the obedience of Christ. So in other words, we must be didactic. We've got to deal. 
deal with people's hands. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, but also with all thy soul and mind. All right. Uh, thank you. And then thirdly, uh, uh, we guard it with the domestic. Uh, we guard it with the didactic. Uh, and then we guard it with the dynamic. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, that's a little bit of what we saw uh, a few minutes ago uh, when the young lady apparently uh, uh, fell ill. Mm. And uh, we watched. Uh, thank you, sir. As the man of God uh, broke protocol. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and went and did not take oxygen went and did not take a tourniquet went and did not take a blood pressure cuff but took his great big hands you didn't hear me uh, and uh, laid hands uh, on the dear one. Why did he do that? Uh, because of gospel uh, that you can't back up uh, with the dynamic uh, is a gospel uh, that has no power. Uh, Mark chapter 16 verse 15 uh, said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized uh, shall be saved. Uh, he that believeth not shall be damned. Uh, but what in verse 17 Say, and these signs uh, shall follow them uh, that believe uh, in my name, uh, they shall cast out devils. Uh, when you, I'm not ready for that yet, but thank you. Uh, uh, when uh, you are domestically sound uh, and when you are didactically savvy, uh, but you don't have any dynamite in your preparation, uh, then the enemy can back you all the way down. Uh, and you are a motivational preacher, uh, motivational speaker, uh, rather than a gospel preacher. Uh, but the thing that makes the difference uh, uh, between uh, uh, good news uh, and uh, just good rhetoric uh, is the power of God. Uh, I heard Paul say in Romans 1.16, uh, he said, for I am not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Christ. Uh, he said, for it is uh, the power of God uh, unto salvation. Uh, I quoted it before, but you don't mind one more quote. Uh, Acts 1 and 8, he said, but ye shall receive what? Uh, and the word in the Greek is dunamis. Uh, uh -huh. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Dynamite, dynamic. Uh, he said, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both uh, in Jerusalem and in all Judea in Samaria uh, and to the uttermost parts of there. So in other words, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we finish preaching uh, or in the middle of preaching uh, or before we start preaching, uh, somebody's got to go back to lay hands uh, on the sick. Uh, somebody's got to go back to prophesying. Huh? Come on here. Huh? Somebody's got to go back and get a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. Huh? It's not enough for you to study. Huh? When is the last time you fasted? Huh? And I'm not talking about the church consecration. I'm talking about your consecration. How you going to fast to 12 p.m. and you slept to 10 a.m.? Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said that there are certain kinds of spirits and certain kinds of strongholds that don't move until somebody prays and fasts. You've got to have your own personal consecration before God. You've got to have your own time in the presence of the Lord on your face. It is not enough to rehearse a sermon you saw on YouTube. It is not enough to take the notes that you saw on Facebook and re-preach them. You've got to have a consecration so that it doesn't just come up out of your Head, but it comes up out of your belly. God, I wish I had time to preach it. Oh, time. Oh, no. Hey, hallelujah. One of the reasons why the world does not respect us is because we seem to be a powerless church. But tell somebody we are going to be guardians of the faith. I don't have time for Ephesians 6 and 12. But 6 and 12 said, put on the whole arm of God. And then it lists 12 down through 18 and 19. But we don't have time for all of that. But listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, I read to you the the book of Proverbs uh, chapter 17 uh, and I read I believe it was uh, verse 8 uh, and the reason why I read that to you is because the Bible said a gift uh, is as a precious stone uh, in the eyes of him that hath it uh, whithersoever it turns it prospers uh, now those of you who study after me uh, when you find some translations it'll render the word gift as bribe 
And of course, a bribe has a negative connotation. However, all translations don't render it bribe. And so in other words, if it's fair to infer a negative connotation, it's also fair to at least look at it and consider a positive connotation. And in the book of James 117, I heard him say, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. And I want to say to you that when I read that text, uh, uh, this is what I get. Uh, uh, this is what I hear. No, not eisegesis. Uh, uh, it's contextually consistent uh, with the rest of the word of God. Uh, and that is that God places in each life uh, a unique gift set. Uh, tell somebody gift set, a unique gift set. Mm, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, when he places that unique gift set in that individual, uh, if that individual will bring that gift back to God, uh, God will use uh, that gift of those gift sets. Uh, he will use them uh, to do uh, a unique work. He will use them uh, to make lasting, even eternal impact. Uh, if the gift of God that is in you uh, is put back in the hand of God, uh, God God has a principle that I call the law of the second touch. Uh -huh. You remember uh, that it was Jesus who created uh, the heaven and the earth. Uh, it was Jesus who created uh, uh, the fish and the flowers, uh, the flora and the fauna. Uh, it was Jesus who created those things. Uh, and so that means all the fish came from Jesus. Uh, I thought it came from God, Brother Blue, same one. Uh -huh. All uh, of the fish and all of the fowl uh, and all all of the fauna came, uh, flora came up from God. Uh, uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Uh, verse 3 says, all things were made by him. Uh, hallelujah. Hey, and so Jesus uh, made all the fish and all the plants. Uh, now what happened uh, in Matthew 14 and the corresponding places in the Gospels uh, when a little boy showed up and gave Jesus uh, two fish uh, and five loaves? Uh, he was putting back in Jesus' hand, huh? what Jesus created from the beginning. Uh, 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 those fish uh, were being put back in the hands uh, that created them. Uh, uh, that bread uh, was being put back in the hands of the one uh, who created the barley uh, and put it in the earth. Uh, and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, uh, somebody said that was the man Christ Jesus. Yes, but what did he do? He took it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he blessed it uh, so it ended back up in the hands of divinity uh, he broke it uh, and he gave it uh, and how many notice uh, that a finite two fish and five loaves uh, became infinite uh, to feed 5,000 men uh, plus women and children what happened uh, they took the fish and the bread uh, that came out of Jesus hand the first time uh, and put it back in his hand uh, it's called the law of the second touch uh, when you take what God gave you, huh? and put it back in his hand he takes what's not enough and makes it more than enough can the church say he'll take what's not enough uh, and make it more hey, than enough. Uh, the same thing that happened to the fish and the barley loaves. Uh, that's what happens when you take your gift uh, and put it back in his hand. Uh, I wish I had a holy church. Hey, hallelujah. Uh, but listen to what it says. Uh, it said that a gift uh, is as a precious stone. Uh, let's imagine a stone. Uh, a precious stone. Let's imagine a diamond. Uh, you understand that in order for a diamond to be a diamond. Uh, it has to come forth uh, after years, decades, and centuries uh, of darkness, uh, density, uh, and pressure. Uh, uh, but if the coal can survive, uh, if the coal can withstand the pressure, uh, there comes a time when what was coal uh, becomes gold, uh, or rather diamond. Uh, and then the diamond uh, is taken and the guard diamond is cleaned. But this is not only is it cleaned, but it is faceted. Uh, it is shaped. Uh -huh. And you have a diamond that has multiple facets. Uh -huh. It has multiple surfaces. Uh -huh. And when you have a diamond with multiple surfaces, uh -huh. if you put the diamond near the light, uh -huh. whichever way you turn it, uh -huh. it gives 
gives uh, a unique sparkle. Uh, it gives uh, a unique glow. Uh, the various colors uh, are from ultraviolet uh, uh, all the way down uh, to the red colors. Uh, those things begin to show up because uh, you have a precious stone uh, and you're turning it uh, and whichsoever way you turn it, it prospers. Well, my brothers and my sisters, uh, uh, if the diamond has various facets, a uh, multi facets, uh, uh, then uh, we're not just looking at a diamond, uh, we're looking in this case at a person. Uh, because Ephesians 4 said he gave some apostle uh, and some prophet. These are not properties, these are people. Uh, and what God is saying is that when I make you a gift, uh, not just give you a gift, but make you a gift, uh, then uh, there is something that happens when I turn you. Uh, 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 praise the Lord. Uh, I won't be able to preach it all. I see it okay. Uh, 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 but God says, I am uh, the possessor of you. Uh, you are my precious stone. Uh, and if you'll let me turn you uh, in my light, uh, then whichever way I turn you, uh, I'll cause you to prosper. Uh, and I will get the glory. Uh, can the church say, yes, Lord. Uh, my God, I pray your name. Now there is a Latin root that is translated turn. It is the root verse of vert. It means to turn. Inverse. Reverse. Verse of vert means to turn. And I want to say to you that when God has put multiple gifts in you then he brings to the surface a kingdom principle called verse utility. Everybody say verse utility. Uh -huh. He turns you. And whichever way he turns you, there's a glory that follows you. I'm talking about a man of God named James Rawson. Is there anybody in here has ever saw, has ever seen rather, has ever witnessed God showing forth the multifaceted giftedness that he put in James Rawson? Uh -huh. He is a precious stone in the hand of the Lord uh, and with Whatever way God turns him, uh, that thing prospers. I've watched him uh, in the music ministry, and uh, when he put his hand on the music ministry, God made the music ministry to prosper. I've, I've watched him organize workshops and seminars, uh, and uh, everything that he organized uh, seemed to have the Midas touch, uh, because whichever way he turned it, uh, God caused it to prosper. Uh, can the church say versatile? Uh -huh. This man that we're looking at uh, is an example of versatility. Uh, I know I got to give you up even though I sat here uh, and waited through everything else that you said and did. Uh, praise the Lord, but I am going to close. I'm not being mean. Uh, I do understand. We all got to go. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, there's an example in the scripture uh, that I would love to lift up before you as I close. Uh, it is uh, the example of the apostle Paul uh, in the book of Acts chapter 17. Uh, Chapter 18 uh, and chapter 19. Uh, hallelujah. And the Bible lets us know uh, that in Acts chapter 17, uh, Paul, my son, uh, went through uh, the city of Athens uh, and ministered the word. Uh, and uh, uh, in Acts chapter 18, uh, he went to the city of Corinth uh, and ministered the word. Uh, and then in Acts chapter 19, uh, he went to the city of Ephesus uh, and ministered the word. Uh, hallelujah. And how many know that Paul was a versatile man? And so he went to the city of Athens, and there he began to stand on the Areopagus. He began to stand on Mars Hill and began to quote poetry. He said, your poet said that ye are his offspring. But then he said, let me give you a little lyric on my own. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Can the church say yes? Uh, praise the Lord. And uh, we don't read uh, of a church being established in Athens. Uh, it doesn't mean it wasn't established. Uh, it just means that we didn't read it. Uh, but when he got uh, to the 18th chapter of the book of Acts, uh, there uh, he 
decided I'm not going to quote poetry. I'm not going to spout philosophy. No, he tells us what his strategy was. In the book of 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, he said, my speech and my preaching was not in enticing words of man who is them, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. He said, when I got to Corinth, I didn't worry about Plato. I didn't worry about Socrates, but I got my all bottled out and I started laying hands. I started prophesying and we do have a book called the book of Corinthians. Two of them, in fact, can the church say, yeah. but when we get to the 19th chapter of Acts, we find him in Ephesus and in Ephesus, he decides that since I'm versatile, instead of being one dimensional, I'm going to integrate uh, the gifts of God that are in my life. Uh, so at the beginning of the book of Acts, uh, chapter 19, he lays hands, uh, he preaches, uh, and forget the Holy Ghost. Uh, then he turns around uh, and goes to school, uh, to the school of Tyrannus, uh, and gives scholarly debate. Uh, can the church say yeah? Uh, then he turned around again uh, and took handkerchiefs of aprons uh, and brought them to the sick, uh, and the sick were made whole and the demon eyes were delivered. Why is it? Because God made Paul a versatile being. God made Paul a multifaceted messenger. And I've come to tell you that James, much like Paul, because of the diversity that is in his giftedness, because of the diversity that is in his aptness, God is going to take him as we leave this room. God is going to take him as we leave this weekend. And God is going to turn him in a way that you've never seen him. And every way God turns him, he's going to light him up. Every way God turns him, he's going to show forth the might and the power of God. I want you to point your hand at him and say, James, get ready to turn. Can the church say yes as he puts his life back in the hand of God? God is going to take him. God is going to bless him. God is going to break him. And God is going to give him. Can the church say yes? Thank God. I'm closing. I'm closing, but I thank God. Come on. Come on, Pastor Clark. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful that you've given me time. You've given me time to share what I believe to be the heart of God. The reason why I call this the turn of James is because indeed God is about to, uh, to shift him. Uh, God is about to, uh, to cause him to evolve uh, and even to revolve. Uh, can the church say yes? Uh, 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 I want to tell kingdom life. Uh, I need for you to get in prayer uh, like you never had prayed before. I need you to get in consecration uh, like you never have before uh, because every precious stone uh, needs a setting. Uh, every precious stone uh, needs a place uh, where it can be contextualized. Uh, and so kingdom life, uh, God has chosen you uh, to be the context uh, for this precious stone. Uh, can the church say yeah? Yes, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, as I give you up, I was reminded of the fact that in Scripture there's another gentleman. His name is Jacob. And the Bible says that he got a birthright by a legitimate exchange. But the blessing was almost stolen. The blessing was almost stolen. But in order to counteract theft, he engaged in subterfuge. And he went under the hand uh, of his father, Isaac. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, follow me. Uh, he went under the hand of Isaac. Uh, and the reason why he went under Isaac's hand uh, is because Isaac uh, told Esau, uh, come and be blessed uh, because it's your turn. Uh, you were born first in time. Uh, and so now it's your turn. Uh, uh, but God saw uh, that 
that even though, even though Esau was first in time, Esau had sold his birthright, and therefore it was not his turn. It was Jacob's turn, even though Jacob is the second boy, it's his turn. And I want to tell you, there's some that have sold out, but it's James' turn. Some that gave up the faith, but it's James' turn. Can the church say yes? Say yeah, Lord. Bless his name. And the reason why I mentioned Jacob is because the Hebrew Jacob is the English James. Hallelujah. And I'm glad to be able to congratulate another Jacob. And one of the ways I know that you're a Jacob who had to come in Israel is because I've watched you. You used to pimp, but now you got a limp. And that's a sign that you're been wrestling. That's a sign that you've been tried. That's a sign that you've grown up. That's a sign that you have matured. And so even though it might not be your time because somebody else defaulted, it's your turn. Look at somebody and say, James, turn. This is, this is too much word. Listen, listen. J Jacob, James, Jacob, James is a precious stone in the hand of God. And whichever way God turns him, he will prosper. He's a gift, Ephesians 4. And he is a partaker of manifold, multifaceted grace. First Peter 4. I want to ask that you would lift your hands in a minute of prayer. I feel the presence of the Lord. I do. I feel the presence of the Lord. I know different ones of us have different challenges, but I sense the presence of the Lord. God is going to place a fresh anointing on this man today. Yes. God is going to get a deeper grip on Jacob. Yes. I mean James. I mean James. I mean Jacob. Same name, you understand. God is going to get another grip on him. And kingdom, watch God turn him. Rawson family, Jackson family, Watch God turn him. And every which way that God turns him, he shall prosper. Can you receive that? Now, that minute of prayer that I spoke of, point your hands in his direction and ask God to turn him. Don't just say the words turn him. I said ask God to turn him. Make him even more versatile. More music. More nonfiction compositions. More favor in the workplace. More favor in what's called the marketplace. Let his voice have greater weight than it ever has before. And let his family and let the Kingdom Life Ministry be the appropriate setting for this diamond that has gone through the pressure of becoming. We give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name. Well, thank God. Everybody praise it. So those of you that are going to pray through this next segment, this final segment of this, this worship experience, I want you to get in the place of intercession. Get in an attitude of worship as we yield back to our co-consecrators and those men and women of God who are aiding us in this sacred moment. God bless you.
praise God. Hallelujah. The scriptures tell us that Jesus, our Savior, spent the whole night in prayer before he chose and sent forth his 12 apostles. Likewise, the apostles prayed before they appointed Matthias to be one of their number. Let us therefore follow their examples and offer our prayers to Almighty God before we consecrate James for this work to which we trust the Holy Ghost has called him. Thank you, Jesus. Our God, we thank you. You're the true consecrator. We ask God in the name of Jesus, do a work that none other can do. Slip your hand under our hands. Assure us that your anointing rests upon him. Oh God, we thank you now. Thank you. Because only you know what destiny lies ahead. So we believe you now. Do the incredible. Fresh oil. Fresh. Be upon him. Fresh fire. Consume him. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus, he lays prostrate before you because you're the king. We all bow with humble submission. We pray, oh God, do as only you can do. And as you've taught your disciples to pray, so we pray, everyone, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and forgive us as we forgive those. Lead us not into temptation, but for thine is the kingdom and the glory. Forever. The scriptures teach us that under the old covenant, as well as under the new covenant the oil is symbolic of the outpoured holy spirit of god under the old covenant the high priest and the priests were anointed as follows the great ear the ear on the right side the ear on the right side the lobe of the ear on the right side was anointed and the thumb of the right hand was anointed. And then the Bible says the great toe of the right foot was anointed. The anointing of the ear to hear what God says to his people. The anointing of the hand to do the works that God has assigned to his people. The anointing of the feet to walk in the spirit, to walk by faith, to walk in obedience to the will of God. These bishops will now lay their hands upon this man of God a Bible principle called impartation is what takes place when hands are laid. And so those who are able to kneel are welcome. If you can't kneel, just stand and point your hands in his direction. But Father, a 
according to your word. Make this man a bishop in your church. Shama. Make him an apostolic voice. Make him be an emissary. Cause him to be an emissary. Cause him to be a witness with the apostles of the resurrection of Jesus. Congregation, would you point your hands and lift your voices? Point your hands and lift your voices. Father, let the compounded oil, let the diverse oil of God, even as you instructed Moses to take cinnamon and calamus and all the others and to mix them together, let there be, oh God, a compounded anointing, a multifaceted precious stone in the name of Jesus and turn this man the crown of his head turn him to the soles of his feet God make him that evergreen tree that whatsoever he doeth cause it to prosper in the name of Jesus father from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet let a fresh wave of the glory of God envelop him in the name of Jesus, I thank you for opening new doors. Thank you for opening doors of utterance. Thank you for fresh favor being upon his life. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that as you transition him and promote him forward, that you will cause the elders of kingdom life to inhabit the places that he leaves behind. In the name of Jesus, let them inherit the mantle. Let them get the double portion. God, give it to his sons. Give it to his daughters. Give it to his grandchildren. Lord, and let it be shared with his wife. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Thank you for touching him afresh and anew. In the mighty, in the mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Am I satire? All oh, Sawyer. Yeah. If I could get some out of Lift up your voice and bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want you to praise God if you agree with the prayer. Praise him if you agree. Yes. And now, brothers and sisters, we're going to assist our brother in rising, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask one other thing, if it's not on the program, but I want to ask the woman of God to come and stand just briefly Hallelujah. beside him, just briefly. There's going to be a prayer over the whole family, but we're asking that she would stand with him just for a moment. And I'm going to ask again these apostles and various ones that you point your hands in her direction. Father, in order for her to help him, to bear the weight of this next mantle and mandate. She likewise will need a fresh anointing. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, God. And I thank you that you're putting in her a new resilience. Thank you, Lord God, that you rejuvenate and that you invigorate her from the crown of her head to the soles of, of her feet. Thank you that no weapon that is formed. Oh! Yes, Lord, that no weapon that is formed against her shall prosper and that she shall be eyes for him and she shall be ears for him. Not the ears of gossip, not the eyes of fault finding, but you shall give it to her in the spirit to see that that he doesn't see and to deserve that that he does not deserve. I thank you. Speak in the dream. Get all in her vision in the mighty name of Jesus. Let her lay hands on the sick and let the sick be made whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the power of the devil be broken when she speaks God's word. And I pray you for this now. In the matchless name, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody open your mouth. Yeah, God. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. In the name of Jesus.
Christ our Lord. Thank you right now. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. You may return. Thank you to your seats. I'm going to ask at this time we'll prepare for the investiture of the bishop. We'll prepare for the investiture. Hallelujah. Continue praying, brothers and sisters. Continue praying. Hallelujah. Continue praying. Jesus. Continue praying. When prayer is made for the family, I'm going to ask that some of the leading ladies will stand with First Lady Rawson, praise God, to further agree with her that the hand of God will rest upon her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood has washed away each stain. Thank you, Jesus. At the set hour on this morning, our bishop was granted his first articles of vestments, the Roman cassock, the censure, and his zaketa. At this time we receive the rochet. It is the garment that identifies the bishop as the chief worship leader. The rochet. Shamir, that of scarlet, is the sleeveless vest that represents the mantle of the prophet to which he is. Tippet, the bishop's scarf, it represents the bishop has a bond that a slave is yoked to Christ, is bound with love. The bishop's scarf. ceremonial cross cord which bears his pectoral cross to him by his his mother she testified this is her son in whom she's well pleased
his Episcopal ring is worn on the signet. I believe it bears his coat of arms. It's been presented to him on his right hand, ring finger, presented to him to the same lady who presented the ring on his left hand his ring finger, his wife, his partner in ministry. The cloak represents charity and a royal priesthood. Also symbolizes a bishop as the shepherd's covering the sheep from their nakedness and their exposure. Bishop's cloak. Does the kettle? It's a bishop's indoor head covering. It's worn throughout the services. Now he's presented his mitre. It's a liturgical headdress with two points representing the cloven tongues of fire on the heads of the disciples on the day of Pentecost. The phalanx represents the connection between the Old and the New Testaments. The bishop's mitre. He's presented this time the crozier the shepherd's staff from his presiding bishop. Father, in Jesus' name, as we sup together, we do thank you for your work on Calvary. Yes, we do. And by your stripes we're healed. And we thank you for the water from your side, for our baptism. Now, God, keep us in remembrance of your work. And we bless you in Jesus' name. first act as a bishop 
just to serve a couple of bishops and the body of the Lord. dreadful night when the Lord Jesus had sat, he took the bread and said, this bread is my body broken for you and for the healing of your body. And in the same manner, he also he took the cup saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. We'll never eat on this side again. At this time, brothers and sisters, we will receive the matriarch of this great ministry, Mother Janie Jackson, as she will offer prayer for the family. allowing us to be here. God, I thank you for this very special occasion. I thank you for this wonderful family that you placed here, dear God. Oh, God, I thank you for all things that they've done down through the years. They've been faithful to you, dear God. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you know exactly what they need. Hallelujah. We don't even know ourselves. But, God, we ask you to supply their every need. Dear God, we ask you to do to them as you did to Solomon. Give them wisdom to lead your people, dear God. Oh, God, give them knowledge. Hallelujah. So that they will rightly divide your word. God, we thank you and we praise you. Let them know that faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these that is love. Oh, God, we ask you to give them love beyond comparison, dear God. Help them to give, give, give them love, Jesus. Lead and guide them in all of your ways, dear God. We will praise you. We will honor you. We give you the praise and the glory, dear God. Bless each one of them, dear God. Bishop, uh, Bishop Rawson, I thank you for God's blessing. Lady Rawson, I thank you for God's blessing. Sons, grandsons, the entire family, God lead and guide them and let them be like a light that sets on a hill. Let others run in and ask, what must I do, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus? What must I do to be saved, hallelujah? Oh God, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
Your Lord, in Jesus' name, this is my son. And I transfer the anointing over to him. Like from Elisha and Elijah. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on this, my son. Send an anointing that will break and destroy yokes. Take the anointing. Take the anointing. Receive the anointing. Peace the word in season and out of season. I put it upon you now. And I declare a double anointing, a double protection in your life. And the church shouted, hallelujah. hallelujah. Rise and go forth. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And bless God's people. me free. I can't help but to say yes. I got to give you my best, my best. Oh. How do Oh! 
this time that everyone would please stand. As presiding prelate of the Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries, I declare that you are duly consecrated to the holy office of bishop. Take your authority to execute the office in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, by the grace of God, I present to you as he turns the right reverend James Lee Rawson Jr., a bishop in the Lord's church. Give another round of applause. Come on, let's let's celebrate him and celebrate what God has done and is doing and shall do in him. As he mounts this platform for the first time as bishop 
Let's let him know that we celebrate him. Come on. Come on. Said I want to give you. Said I want to give you. I'm determined to give you. Nothing less. Giving so much to me. I owe you more than I give. I want to give you. Nothing less. How much I owe. For love divine, how much I owe, since Christ is mine, what he is to me, all right. Sorry, this is the theme of my heart. How can I say thanks for the things? Am I supposed to hold this? You've done for me things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love to me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude, but all that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee, to God. I said to God, to God be the glory. Um, the hour is far spent and um, my, family, my family had a little wager that I lost today. It's a private. My wife and I owe her money now. I always owe her money, but now I got to pay this one too. I want to thank the Lord for my wife. And I want to thank the Lord. As I stated last night, and I cannot overstate it, she's a class act in public. She is distinct in her manner in public. But what many of you may not know, most mornings I get up to an empty bed because she has been on her face I wake up and I reach over and I realize she's closed the bedroom door and I can hear her crying to God five or six o'clock in the morning. And that has sustained not only our marriage, but it's sustained my ministry as a pastor. Not only as a pastor, but our family. My sons are here because they have, yeah, I'm a praying man, but I promise you, they got a praying mother. And um, I'm so grateful for them. Uh, my mother in love. I know where my wife gets it from. Mother Jackson is the queen of our hearts my mother. I wouldn't have life or faith. I wouldn't know God the way I know him if it wasn't for the resilience of Mother Shirley Jean Rawson. You already know how I feel. One of my grandkids is here. Hey, Chase. That's my boy, Papa's boy. Kobe came along. And I called him Papa's boy, and Kobe and Chase told me one day, I'm Papa's boy. You gotta get him another name. And um, I'm just so grateful for my family. I'm not gonna be long. 
uh, my extended family is here. The Dardens, I see y'all, and um, I love y'all. And well, I guess we are Rawsons. If you go back, one, all of the Smithricks and Rawsons are here. I love y'all so much. Uh, my sister uh, was determined after just having knee surgery, was determined to be here. And I was so frustrated about her coming, I was concerned. But if you know my sister, I was talking to a brick wall and she rolled herself. She had to be rolled in the banquet last night, but she was determined to be here, but she's not here today. She's not feeling the greatest, but I love her so dearly. And if she was here, she would tell you she's my only sister. My brother and sister, Sherry, my brother who many times he's called me his hero, but he's become mine as well. And I love you so much, Scott. I'm thankful for you. There are too many people to call by name in this place, but to my presiding bishop, my bishop, after being able to call him my brother, my friend, my confidant, then God began to take him to greater heights. And in 1998, 97, I stood behind him as he was being consecrated to the bishopric. And we would have conversations and we would say things like, uh, I know you're on your way to the Vatican or I know you're on your way. He would say things, I know you're on your way to Potter's house and I would, we would go back and forth with that banter and to see what God has done. And for God to speak to my heart, to align myself, submit myself and connect myself to the Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries because of this man of God. And from that, I've gained a whole amazing family, my CCFM family. This is nowhere near, this is a small portion of them, but I thank God for you and I love you so very, very much. To by the way, church, my home church, my pastor, oh, he's here. Yes, he made it. He is the hardest working man in ministry and in politics. And um, he's an amazing heart. And Kingdom Life, you will appreciate this. There's not been a turn that we've ever made in 20 years that by the way didn't help us make it. And it's because of the heart of this leader and these, the people of God here. I need us to give God praise for him today. I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful to you. To my brother, my first hero, mentor, the greatest compliment I ever received in my entire life. So I was somewhere preaching, and I walked in. I hadn't even preached yet. We were just kind of having, you know, office chatter. And I began to talk because the truth is I wanted to. I know, you know, Michael Jordan came along and y'all said that but I was saying it a long time before then. Everybody wants to be like Mike. I wanted to walk like Mike. I wanted to play the organ like Mike. I wanted to write songs like Mike. I began, <laughs> I think I was 10 years old and I had the audacity to call the chief apostle's house I don't know what possessed me to call. I, I, I'm going to tell you how I got the number. Probably we used to have Bible Way directories. Y'all don't know nothing about the directory. And it had the address, the names, and the phone number. <laughs> now, you know we ain't doing that now. But my mother and father were friends and to Rogers, Mother Rogers, the queen, who's not here, but I love her so very dearly whole lot of times, mama, you got me out of trouble 
with this man over here. And um, when I would get in trouble with him, she pulled me to the side. She said, nah, 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 nah Bishop's mad at you, but I ain't. And she would try, <laughs> she, and she would get me out of things. Me and uh, David Frazier would get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> but I called him, didn't know what I was doing, but I do believe this, life leaves clues. And if you pay attention to your life, God continues to drop clues. I had no idea that I was taking that crazy chance. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't realize the, the, the grandeur of it. All I knew was that I was being pulled in the direction only to know that I would be touched by the mantle. When Elisha met Elijah, he dropped everything. When I was touched by the mantle of now presiding Bishop Michael J. Rogers, I was messed up by that mantle. I remember he took me all over the country as I served him as musician. And I remember sitting in a convocation at the PEW and there were thousands of people and he couldn't even get a word out because they were screaming and hollering and running into each other. And I hadn't even started playing yet. He was just talking, you know, he was just, you Mikey, you know, he was just building it up. And um, I just began to preach and I said, Lord, I'll never do this. This is impossible. And somehow God spoke to him on our way away from that and said, James, because he calls me James with authority. It's a reason. He says, James, you'll be doing this one day. Thank you for pouring into my life. When I wanted to give up, you wouldn't let me. When I tried to give up, you would not. When I needed rescue and you made me come to Virginia and I slept on my shields, count. But you wouldn't let me out of my sight, your sight. You wouldn't let me out of your sight. When people had walked away from me and left me for dead, you would not let me go. So this day has to mean something to me. To my father. This goes so far beyond these garments and, and titles. When my father went to be with the Lord, he called me and said, I got you. I'm your father. I'm going to be your father. And I'm going to say this. He is known all over the world as the president of preachers, and he has a reputation of being one of the greatest spokes spokesmen in the kingdom, and God knows he's got all of the accolades to prove it. But the, one of the reasons why I appreciate him so much, I, I can't, well, sometimes y'all see me do crazy things, y'all think it's crazy, and I'm shaking the mic and I'm running and I'm doing all of that. That's where I get it from, bitch, y'all know, y'all, I, I get it from him. But ever since then and before then, everybody knew him, Keisha, as the world famous, but I had the privilege of being pastored by him. While everybody was talking about the national fame and we get to the conventions and everybody, Bishop Rogers, he was my pastor. Which meant when it came time for chastisement, he was my pastor. He cared more about my life, my soul, than he did my gift. And when, and when, People came after me and were looking for me to be destroyed. It was this man who protected me. He put me up in front of people that said I shouldn't be up. See, so when I talk about loyalty, I ain't, I ain't playing church games. I mean this. The hardest seasons of my life, Bishop, 
Huey Rogers was always there. And he protected me by validating the hand of God on my life. And there is not too many weeks that go by where we don't talk. I love you. Love you. Apostle Rooker is here. Thank you for being who you've been. You spoke this over my life. You told me. I see it on you. Don't let him catch you on the hallway because if he says it, it's going to happen. I'm grateful. Now, let me finish by saying kingdom life. I don't know how y'all feel about me. I know how you feel about me sometimes. And we're not going to discuss that. But I love you. Paul said, you are the proof of my ministry. I stand here validated in this place because you keep showing up. For 20 years, we've been together. And I liken it to the era, the time of the great Western rush, the gold rush going to West in this country. Jerry Jones tells the story that many people started as he equates it to the Dallas Cowboys fame, Al. Many people started, but some people dropped off. But there are some who made it all the way to the West Coast. I want to thank you for not letting me take a walk. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being loyal. You don't have a pa perfect pastor, never been. And I don't have no problem telling y'all because I don't pastor perfect people. We just serve a perfect God and we just keep trying to work at it till we get it right. And we've gone from the Cook Center to 1172 Orangeburg Mall Circle in the mall. And now God has made room for us and we own a whole campus. And it's because of you that I get up every morning and go to work because I love you with my heart to this amazing corral. If you know me, you know music is my heart beat and for you all to serve today, I am overwhelmed. Richard Odom, Maestro Richard Odom. God brought him in our life. Well, he's always been in my life, but God brought him in our life in this season. And he took control of this whole thing and put it together. I love you, Richard. I appreciate you. I feel like lifelong, but it's probably 30 years or so more. Minister Adrian Nesbitt, I love you. I love you, man. Thank you for being my brother and an amazing musician. Jarvis, where are you? Jarvis, that's my son, y'all. The most loyal, faithful young man I've ever known. I love you with everything I have in me. I appreciate all of you. This band, I am personally connected to all of them, and I thank you. I thank you so much. That's enough. Um, I hope everything. Huh? Bishop William Young, this would not be what it is without you. Thank you. Thank you for making me walk halfway down the aisle. Thank you for carrying this out in excellence. And everybody who's come from far and near, I love so many had to go. I want to say this openly because I think it's important. Bishop Rudy McKissick was on his way here, uh, but his mom had a stroke. And she's in ICU. He's a beloved brother of mine, and I love him so much. He and his wife, Kim. Um, Bishop Pat McKinstry was scheduled to be with us. Everything paid for, and her oldest son passed. I love her, but we're praying for her. Bishop Larry Trotter, Trotter was here coming and lost his oldest pastor in his fellowship. Um, Bishop Carl Montgomery 
we're praying and I'm believing God for his wholeness. I'm believing God for his wholeness today. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. We'll be at 3729 tomorrow morning, Magnolia Street. 3729 Magnolia Street in the beautiful garden city of Orangeburg, South Carolina. And I get to dress all the way up. <laughs> no work clothes tomorrow. I get to dress up and experience the life and the ministry and the legend, the legend of the chief for life, Apostle Huey Rogers. Kingdom life, I need y'all to get excited. I need y'all know how, I need y'all to already make Apostle feel like we can't wait. Come on, I need y'all to make some, I need y'all to make him feel like we can't wait. Thank you for everything. Everybody stand. I got so many nephews in the room. Okay. For those who have stayed over and those who are from out of town and, and our special guests, we have food prepared in the fellowship hall for you in the name of the Lord. So come, let's spend a couple moments fellowshipping. And um, one thing about learning about being in the South, we're going to feed you. The, nav the navigators are here from Houston, Texas. I love you all. And from Richmond, Virginia, I love you so much. That's it. Now may the grace of our Lord, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule about in our hearts now and forever. And every glad heart say amen. amen. If you're remaining in your seats, allow them to go out, please. If you'll just remain in your seats, allow the bishops to exit, please.